It's strictly for the person who wants to be there. You're listening to the Bulk Loads Podcast, your number one resource for everything bulk freight trucking. And this is episode 231. Hey guys, Jared Flynn with the Bulk Loads Podcast. Got Tyler with me. What's going on? It's Christmas week. It is. Our Christmas-ish week. I guess Christmas is uh, Sunday, but yeah. 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 I always, uh, it's always different whenever it falls on a weekend versus a weekday. Yeah. I actually, you probably don't like, I like it just because coming from the logistics world, like it makes loading and scheduling a lot easier than if it falls during the middle of the week. Yeah, less stress. Yeah. You got all your Christmas shopping done? Uh, My wife does. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you She's like me, on I just have one person to buy for. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got to make sure I do that right, though, too. Yeah, exactly. Um, I've um, not done that right before and have paid for it <laughs> um, in the past. So, um, so yeah, with that said, if you uh, hey, just keep in mind, Christmas is just right around the corner. So, if you have not... Uh, make sure and uh, get that done. So, um, well, man, I got a special guest on today. Um, I, I recently just met this guy. Um, we just got back from the um, NGFA conference up in St. Louis. I had a great time, met uh, a lot of different individuals. Um, but this individual, actually, one night we were uh, having dinner and uh, came up and introduced himself. He saw we had little badges on or name tags and uh, asked kind of what we did. And started telling what he did, and man, we just hit it off. Um, but yeah, Greg Martinelli is his name. He is a sales training and coach, keynote speaker. Um, actually, lives up there in St. Louis. Um, we didn't actually talk about this, so I actually I'll mention. Um, actually, was with Cargill um, for years, and and left them, and, and kind of started doing his um, kind of his own venture doing this. Um, but you know, and I've talked about this before. Uh, I have a coach that I use, um, and it's helped me so much, but it just seems like it's gotten more and more popular people hiring coaches to help them move to that next level in their business. Yeah. And I think it's, uh, I think it can relate in all aspects, um, carrier and broker and shipper, uh, just because you gotta, you gotta be able to sell yourself every single day. Yep. Um, whether you're dealing with new clients or, um, you know, new customers, I mean, you gotta, you gotta, be able to sell yourself and represent yourself in a way um, that you want to do business with that person. And we're going to talk about this in detail. And Greg really spoke well. You can tell, I mean, I got pretty excited in these conversations, but it doesn't matter what job you have. I mean, maybe there's one out there that you need no sales skills at all. But if you are a owner operator, a driver, freight broker, grain merchandiser, feed broker, trader, whatever, like you have to know how to sell um, what you are. I mean, you, you have to know what to sell um, on how to sell it. You know, yep. whether you're selling, trying to get someone to haul your freight, um, to sell your feed, your, your fertilizer or, or what that might be. And again, it's not that easy and you need coaching and advice and tips to know that, you know, this Tyler, do we, we have, you know, training every week you know, that we do every morning, we kind of try to bring yep. in a skill set. Um, but the whole purpose is like, how do we keep learning and sharpening our skills? And it's not just to in land more sales, but how do we become better professionals and communicate better? And uh, sales training has a lot to do with that. Yeah. Yeah. And we, you've always said, and you've always taught us this, but nothing ever good comes from being comfortable in your life. But yeah. if you're always improving yourself um, and always growing, that's how you get your uh, personal life and your career, your business life to the next level. So cool. Well, enough said. Here is my conversation with Greg Martinelli. Hey, Greg, thanks for coming on. Well, it's great to be here, Jared. I'm excited to uh, talk with your listeners. Yeah. Well, man, this has been like cool how we met. And I think we, we have to talk about that first. Um, yeah. Because, man, just the most random places, but you never know where you're going to see an opportunity. Um you know, we, we, so we met just at the, at the NGFA convention, not necessarily at it, but at a restaurant just right, right across. And, uh, I was sitting down with, with some of my team members having dinner. Um, you walked by and asked if we were there and man, we started talking and here we are on the podcast. Yeah. You know, I went down there to meet a customer. They invited me out. I wasn't attending the conference cause I'd been to another one just the week before and I was 
anyway, I was in town and uh, went down there to meet him, and, and I couldn't find him. And so I saw you. Everybody had their lanyards on, you know. And, and <laughs> yeah, you know, it's one of those things where you see everybody, and I thought, well, I'll say hi because I I didn't recognize your company, and I had not. Yeah. So it's, I'm always trying to learn and meet people, and, and it turned out to be great because. I learned a whole bunch about what you guys are doing and, and it was a segment of the market that I'm not familiar with and didn't even know was in existence. So, um, and likewise, you guys found somebody. So it's uh, one of those things that you never know who you're going to meet when you network. So yeah. always be open to it. Sure. And, and if I can be brutally honest, I get, you know, there's, when I still go to these events, there gets a little bit of anxiety and just like, you know, I got to leave home and, leave mm-hmm. a farm and come there and is it going to be valuable i'm spending all this time and money and energy right. and then but i mean it seems like every time though i walk away being like my gosh i'm glad i met that and, and there's a reason for these networking events this isn't just right you know, and I, I was even telling a couple of guys on our team i go hey you have to make an effort like you have to like right you know, it's not you know it seems awkward when you go up to to introduce yourself but it's like that's what these are for like you have to do right it, you know right um, so. and, and they're extremely important part of it's so much so um you know the, the, the trade show industry the people who are running them i should say they are really scrambling looking for one how do we keep attendance up Yes. How do we make sure that we we get our financial supporters, which are booths? You know, you buy a booth, you want people to come to your booth, and so you want networking opportunities at your booth and and in, in the social hours. And so, you know, as as, as so much so that uh, at one of the upcoming ones in January, I'm going to do a uh, train the trainer of uh, sort of as train the people how to how to get more out of a trade show. So it's people oh, like yourself and yeah. your salespeople. You know, the, the interesting thing is people that, and I work trade shows for my company for many years, I never wrote that check out of my own pocket. You don't realize how expensive they are. So when yep. you go to the trade show, you need to get a lot of dollars out of it. And there is many companies, mine included, I worked for a big corporation. Every year they argued about, should we be there? What are they worth? Are they really worth spending, you know, $150 for, uh, for electricity at our booth? <laughs> and yeah. that's that's probably on the cheap end and and you know so so my point of this is here's ways that you need to be getting more out of your experience at the trade show and things that you could do similar to what we just what we did in that restaurant is um i would do the very same thing if i was attending that and and was didn't have somebody to meet and uh but yeah absolutely and, I, and and we're going to get into this and what you do, but I think this is a perfect segue. I mean, if if I would have known, or if you would have been one of the speakers, and I'm not just saying this, like I would have been more inclined sure. to even go because, like, oh, I'm going to get value out of that. And this isn't a slam to to the NGFA. I mean, we're members, we love them, but like, sure, so, some of the, the the speakers or the lineup, I, I guess I just didn't. There was nothing that was out of the ordinary or anything that was like, man, I, I got to make sure and, and hit that. Right. There's been years prior. And even earlier this year they had, um, I went to the, to the NGFA, um, down in Charleston, South Carolina and Tim right. Scott, they had him speak. Um, and a couple other, you know, speakers really, really good. But I think, yeah, like there needs to be more of, of kind of what you do. And we're going to talk about that right now, but really like how to growing ourselves and, and growing ourselves well, professionally yeah. and personally. So w- with that said, Greg, Give us kind of an elevator pitch of what you do. Sure. I, I work with ag sales teams specifically. And uh, my specific, I mean ag. I stay within the agribusiness industry. And I work with them on in three buckets, three main categories, sales training, coaching, and speaking. So training is typically in person anywhere from half day to two to three days of workshop type format. You're probably familiar with that's the selling skills and territory management in that aspect. And then the coaching is is done um, predominantly by Zoom. Uh, it used to be all by phone, but now everybody is Zoom qualified. So we we get on there and do the traditional one-on-one, which is a couple times a month. It's up to them and what they're trying to accomplish. And so that's the that's the second bucket, which is coaching. And I do some group coaching. That's become a new yeah. uh, focus for some where they want their whole team on there. Um, And then the third bucket is speaking. And that's what you just mentioned, where um, I'll go to trade shows and to company sales meetings or you have it and and do presentations 
in various formats. And those are usually one hour type presentations or an hour keynote with a breakout session type of thing. So those are the three main. However, I would tell you that all I, because of my background being around the business for 30 years, much of it turns into consultative sales training, consultative coaching. And by that, I mean, they're like, Hey, I don't know where to go or what to do. I'm struggling with my market segment. <laughs> how do I figure out, who, yeah. you know, where do I, how do I get a hold of these people? You know, who, who should I be going to? Or, you know, one of my, probably the more fun aspects, it's not as big of an audience because obviously there's fewer of them and that's sales leaders. I love to, you know, and that becomes almost consulting where we, it's coaching, but it's like, Hey, I, I need to restructure my commission program. I've got six different commission pr uh, uh, programs and I got eight salespeople. They're all on a different program. What do I do? And, you know, where do, how do I keep from losing somebody that's on this program because I'm switching them. So those are, those are the main three buckets, coaching, training, speaking. And then from there, it gets into a wide variety of consultative type of coaches. Wow. Dude, th this is so good. I, I was, so I didn't tell you this and my listeners know this. I hired a coach. Uh, it would have been almost well, a year and a half ago, um, almost two years sure. ago and, and has changed. I mean, it is, I mean, changed myself professionally and personally. I mean, we have yeah. been able to push out new, new business ventures and, and, and features grow our team. But like you, sure. you hit the nail on the head. You just said like, it's that just having that, that sounding board to say, Hey, I'm struggling with this. I don't know how, uh, I don't know how to move forward and having that person, right. that expert to really kind of look from the outside in and say, Hey, here's, here's what I'm telling you. You know, here's what I'm seeing. Here's what I would coach or advise you to do when I was, sure. so when, when I was at the NGFA, I actually had uh, dinner and drinks one night with a friend and I didn't even know this. He was telling me, he's like, you know, I hired a coach last yeah. year to, right. to help me out. And this coach, he only works with certain groups and he only takes on and he goes, man, it is, it has got me to where I am today. And I'm not going to say more than that. Like he is now, I mean, he has had some huge successes this year. And sure. it wasn't until he told Let's me that night, he's like, you, I, I owe so much to this coach that man, he walked right. me through. Cause again, we can get so cloudy and tunnel vision of like, Hey, how do I, right. how do I break through? I, I, I'm stuck where I am. Um, so do I, yeah, I, uh, yeah. I, 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 I well, there's I'm a lot of, this. Of, of retired executives and it used to be, that was more of a, CEO would hire a coach because it was kind of this yeah. corporate. Now the the coaching there's and there's actually a, a federation, you know, there's an association for everything. The International Coaching Federation has local chapters, which I'm a member of the St. Louis chapter. And you know, you see it at much lower levels in the organization. So there's a couple of major companies who have um, actual coaching staff on on their staff, hired employees of the larger corporations, and they coach people in the frontline manager level. So it's not just for CEOs and VPs, yeah. but like yourself, you want to have somebody to bounce these ideas off. It does a lot of different things. It's, it's part counselor, it's part, um, you know, everybody gets the uh, uh, imposter syndrome at some time and they're, yeah. they're like, I, I'm struggling. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. Should I be going down this path? And you just need that somebody to help you kind of gear you back. Used to be we would get that maybe from our peer or our boss or our manager, but you know it's it's getting tougher. So coaching has been a great great avenue, and that, but I would preface this with that, and that is it's strictly for the person who wants to be there. Mm. Um, when you hire an external coach, that's good. The account the accountability the accountability piece is voluntary. So I've had to terminate a lot of coaching agreements by calling back the manager who hired me to coach their salesperson and say, I don't want to wrap this person out, but I also don't want to take your money because they're not doing, they don't want to be here. I mean, I can't fix behavioral issues because I'm not their manager. So if they don't, oops, sorry. So if they don't, um, if they don't want to be there and they don't do the work, you know, coaching is um, it's 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 not it's not even really fifty fifty. It's mostly they're doing a lot of the effort, and you're kind of providing as the coach, you're providing that guidance. And hey, did you think about this? And maybe even some consultative. But um, yeah, just be careful of that for people that you, if you're looking to fix a salesperson or fix a, a a somebody else in your organization, it's tough to do that through coaching if they don't want to be fixed. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's move on to the sales piece. This is, gets me just sure. equally excited. Man, I'm a salesman by trade. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I geek out when it comes to sales skills. Sure. We have, a, we have a, a big sales team here. We were talking before we recorded, and I want you to really speak on this. Like, and People know you have to, I mean, even if you're not a salesman, you have to be able to sell. But you were talking about sure. traders, and I'm going to even, I'm going to rope even truckers and grain merchandise, all of them, like, Sure. You know, you have to have good sales training skills. I'm going to, I'm going to preface one thing. And then I want you to add to this. Like when I was, when I was finding trucking companies to haul for us, um, right. You know, my goal was to find these companies and, and, and book them to move freight. Well, a lot of times some of these lanes that we would move grain on, it was, it was a one way rate. I, I'm, I'm not going to use the, the negative word backhaul. I, I'll get in trouble on that, but okay. you know, I, it, yeah. it was a one way load. It was, it was a load coming back into our terminals. So I'd have to sure. call these trucking companies and, and, and sell them on why they should haul it or why, why, yeah. I, why yeah. I needed to haul them. It wasn't just like, Hey, you want to take it, but it was like, Hey, I got these loads. If you can do this. Maybe I can sure. pay a penny more or whatever. But but for me, I took it on. I was like, hey, I'm not, you know, <laughs> we're the ones paying them. You, you would think that it'd be reversal. But right, I was right. I was having them to sell. I was having to sell them on why they would want to haul the freight and do business with me. It right. wasn't the other way around. Right. And people, I think right. you got to think you got to flip the script. But I'll say this. It's the same with farmers. Same with merchandise. Like, I mean, Absolutely. It, even it doesn't it, it doesn't matter you know which role which side you think you're on whether you're the customer or selling right you still have to be selling i i want you to dive into that and, and kind of unpack kind of the why behind that and maybe if we got time we'll kind of give just some some maybe some soft skills or some techniques sure uh, to, to add to sure. I, I think what you mentioned there's there are two aspects of that one is that everybody's selling something and so that sounds like, well, that's just a sales trainer because you think the whole world. So it's not really true. If you if you have a job right now, you have sold your boss or the hiring manager on your resume. And every really, I mean, I know you get a paycheck regularly, but at some point, companies go through the decision process. Who do we keep and who do we let go? And then that does happen. And I've been in companies that, that do that and been a part of that, both sides of that process. <laughs> You are you are trying to convince people that you are essential and you should be kept on the on the book. So everybody is trying to convince somebody. If you're a project manager, you're trying to convince somebody to spend money on your project. Or if you are a uh, an accountant, you're trying to get people to follow accounting practices. You're trying to sell them on that idea. And so I think the the basic skills of being good at sales and understanding that you're there to help other people get to their where they need to go, but using uh, the best technique that you're trying to, to propose, I think that's essential for all life skills and it's very, very helpful. Now, when it comes to the to what you bring up is that, hey, we're actually writing a check. So theoretically, we're the customer, right? It, it gets reversed in the, in the grain purchasing and the trucking business because it's, it's just a strange phenomenon. They are actually in the power seat, I guess, so to speak. There's more people that want to buy their grain. There's more places that want to hire them as a trucking company. So uh, to do trucking. So they they it's it's always a um buyers or excuse me, a seller's market. And it just stays that way the whole time. And so when I first got into I went from the feed business, you know, selling feed products, which was the traditional um buy sell situation, to the grain business, I was like, why is this so hard? How can this be very difficult? But again, you had to go out there and convince them yeah. why to bring it to you, why to bring it to you. And you still had to go down that path. Now, what really makes this a challenge is when you get into a highly commoditized product. I mean, our the ag industry in general is commodities. Yep. Um, and we're all trying to do value added, but really, you know, nitrous is nitrogen and you know, <laughs> it's just a green con- grain price is a grain price. Yep. And the and the ability to switch is instantaneous. All they gotta do is turn their truck steering wheel the other <laughs> way and they switch your business. Yeah. You know, the feed it was a little harder in the feed business if you had them sold and they had their products in their store, customers yeah. depended on that. There was some brand. But when it would come to grain, so the the differentiator became, and that's what I would talk with our grain buyers, originator teams, was that the main difference is you. So mm-hmm. You know, you, you're complaining about the, the price and, and our product has to be this from that price. What you really have to do is figure out how 
how you as a salesperson or buyer, call yourself whatever you want to call yourself, a merchant, um, you have to figure out what you're going to do differently so that people want to work with you only. And there were one, there were people in our group that figured that out. And they were the, they had the ear of the customer. They were part of their board of directors, so to speak. And so when you're out there trying to convince somebody of that, you realize early on when you're young and you don't have any experience and you don't have any knowledge of what you're truly worth to the customer, you're bumping around trying to figure that out and usually you're running a lot of price resistance because mm-hmm. the customers look at that and say, you know, you don't really offer a lot outside of the product of delivering grain to your elevator. And I can see that on the internet. I can see what your, what your basis is, or I can see what your truck pay, what your paying trucking rate is. And so I think that's one of those things where you got to figure out as a salesperson and as a buyer or whatever the case is, you've got to figure out what am I going to do differently? How am I going to show up differently so that people have an answer to why should I do business with you? And why should I pay you more or get less for my grain by coming to you? Um, and then that's a tough, that's a tough thing to, to, to channel early on in your selling career. Yeah, if I can interject on that, and I won't, this is sure. so good, by the way. I mean, this is <laughs> maybe because this is my language, and yeah, and I, yeah. I, I preach on this all the time. I think it's tough again when you're young, and I can go back 18 years ago, man, when I started at Bartlett Grain Company, and you know, having to yeah. talk with truckers and farmers, and just being like, man, what do I say? How do I convince right. these guys? I mean, for me back in the day, like they, I mean, I had a, an Excel spreadsheet or a stack of papers with with names and numbers. Yeah. Here, start, yeah. start going through the list and calling. And, and, um, but, but I guess what I figured, and I think it, it takes years to culminate this, but like, you have to care, like you have to care about the customer, whether that customer mm-hmm. is the trucker or the farmer. And it may not just be on one conversation call, but if that customer really, really believes and really understands that you care about their best interest. Mm-hmm. I think that's, I mean, to me, that's the secret of this whole thing. And again, like maybe I'm giving that out to everybody, you know, but like, like it, it, you can't fake that people know when people are genuine and when people right. are not, but dude, if you just care about the people that you are working with, you know, or serving, mm-hmm. um, man, I just, I don't know. I just think, you know, you gotta have a good product, but like you said, when you're in this business, it's, it's very commoditized. I mean, there's only so much you can do. <laughs> when it comes right. to that price and all that. But like people want to just know like, Hey, this guy actually cares, man. This guy I can relate to. I understand what mm-hmm. he's saying. You know, maybe he's new. He doesn't, he's not the most knowledgeable, but man, I can, I can hear it in the tone. I can sense in his, in his passion. I mean, his work right. ethic, um, his tone, the way, the way he's treating me, um, that, that the dude, when he asked about my family, he's not just asking to make conversation. The dude actually right, cares. Right. And he remembers right. conversations that we've had prior about families right. and or about something that nobody else would ever n- nobody else would ever acknowledge like he he found right. something well, that he could relate to me on and he remembered that and it's like wow this guy mm-hmm. you know he remembered this conversation right so well, and I, I think that comes in from what the way i turn that into training uh, effect and how to how to develop that um uh, ability and it, it revolves around trust and so there's three major components of trust one of those is self-interest versus others. Mm. And so when a salesperson comes in, there's an old part of our brain that was the fight or flight. And we're all familiar with that. Yep. Well, after we got done being eaten by a dinosaur, whatever ate us back then, we got rid of that. Okay. We don't need that as much anymore. We turn that into first impressions. So you'll hear somebody say, well, I think it's like eight seconds and you form a you know, first impression. Whether you like somebody or don't like somebody. In the selling process, our customers use that tool in their brain to determine, are you out for your commission? Are you out to try to help me yeah. do better by me? And they'd make that deter. I mean, let's just take, uh, let's just take an auto mechanic shop. I, I drive a lot of miles. And when I move to a new location, I've moved a bunch of times in my life. When I move to a new location, I have to have a, a mechanic shop that will take care of me because I'm going to run out of I'm going to have brakes and tie rods and we're bump something in the snow. You know, I mean, I'm going to need a mechanic to help me get my car. <laughs> I love to get a car up to about 300,000 miles. Yeah. But anyway, um, I can tell you within the first few seconds when that, when that service rider starts talking to me, whether he's going to try to milk every hundred dollar repair for 400, <laughs> or is he going to try to do a hundred dollars and get me out the door? And I will absolutely leave a business when I think 
Yeah. That's all this is, is, you know, and I, and I had plenty of those over the years. So what is that that told me that? Well, I mean, action, sure. But it was just a feeling that you get. And so what you're kind of describing is you got to, when you come in, um, and, and a lot of this, I'll work with them on their questions. You know, the people, sales training, I'll say, well, what questions are you, do you ask your customers? And they'll start asking, they'll tell me these questions. I'm like, those are such self-serving questions for you. Mm. Your customers realize all you're doing is lining them up so that they can't say no and so you entrap them. And they know that. So they're going to wiggle out of those as best they can. You've got to ask questions that, that open them up for discussion and points that are, you know, that are different than your competitors because they hear those same questions day in and day out. And yeah. And, uh, but that all kind of gets around to that, that component of, of, you know, how do you, how do you show that you care and how do you show up differently than the next salesperson that comes down the road? Yeah. You know, one thing I'm going to get myself in trouble saying this, but you know, there's <laughs> right now there's technology galore. We're seeing a lot of new mm-hmm. businesses, agribusinesses, startups coming onto the front. And I'm, I'm not put, saying all this, but. There's some of these ones I talked to, there's even some, maybe I met at the trade show, you know, I go talk about, you know, what do you do? You know, the first thing you talk about is their valuation. Well, we're valued at this mm-hmm. or we're, I'm like, yeah, it wasn't even my question. Yeah. I'm like, well, how are you serving the customer? What are you right. doing? What, what, right. what, what pain point are you solving? Not what, what's your worth? I don't care about right. that. Right. You know what I right. mean? And I think, right. you, you know, I don't know. It just turns me off. Like I, I you know, some people they're, they're focused on, <laughs> <laughs> on their, uh, on give, their me, own. give me an example where this happened to me and and my wife hates when this happens i went to buy a car i was living in indiana went to indianapolis and I was a young sales guy and, and i wasn't a sales trainer at the time i mean i was training for my current company but i wasn't doing like i am now i'm independent and the salesperson kept telling me how great their service department was won all these awards service department won these awards finally i stopped and i said you know, what do they win their award for well, the most revenue of any car dealership, any it was a Ford, any Ford dealership in the area. <laughs> so, you know, you really, you shouldn't tell people that because the last thing I'm going to do is buy a car from you and then come spend money in your repair shop. He said, "What are you talking about?" I said, "I want to buy a car and not pay your service comp- your service providers at all." I want. He's like, oh, "I didn't realize it that way." It's like he was telling me something about how great the company was, which was fine, and he was excited about it. But what had happened was he, you know, he got he went to the to the to the management meeting or to the morning meeting or whatever. And they said, you know, our comp- our service department won an award. That's great. Let's let's make sure we well, you got to be careful what you're promoting. And I think the same thing can be, you know, we've been in business 150 years. Well, that's great, but that doesn't really what does that do for the customer? Yeah. What does you that mean? trust? What does I that guess what I guess do? what it's saying is like, hey, we've been around this long. We must be doing something sure. right. Right. But yeah, I, I think you ought to get down when when I, and I, I got most of this training when I left the bigger company because my when I started out I was the the X Y Z man in the area. We had a you know if feed companies would you would call yourself I'm the company X Y Z sales rep for the area. That's that was my job. It didn't tell them anything of what I did. They just kind of they everybody just knew that's what you did. When I went out on my own and, and I worked in as a private provider of a service. You know, one of the first trainings that we I, I, in my little group of industry that I trade with, the first training was you got to be able to explain really quickly what you do for customers and who 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 do you sell, who do you help, and what do you do for them. So it's basically why do companies, why do people hire you? Yeah. And you know, if you let's just say consultant, I'm a consultant. Well, that can mean a million things. <laughs> And so it's, it's, you know, people like this individual you were talking about need to understand, Hey, we, I got to talk about what I do for customers so that when they're talking to you or they're talking to anybody, that person immediately knows, am I a potential customer? Am I somebody that I could do either do business with them or I could help them or I can refer them or whatever that case is. And uh, I think that's really critical in this, in the networking phase of, of growing your business for sure. Yeah. Well, Greg, we could talk, I think for a whole nother hour on this and I'm confident that we'll probably have you back on as a yeah. guest, you know, we're even looking at, we're, we're hosting this conference. Uh, many of our listeners know in February, 
we're potentially looking at having you coming down to speak at that. That'd be great. And I know we're going to talk more about that as well. Um, but just to kind sure. of plant the seed and, and let some of our, our listeners know about that as well. Um, but but if you have companies right now listening, maybe they're small agribusiness or a company that's saying, like, hey, maybe we need to sharpen up our sales team skills. Maybe uh, maybe it's a small entrepreneur or big entrepreneur, a business owner, CEO. Hey, I okay. think I think I want to take the next step, you know, hiring a coach or looking into this. How do they get a hold of you? What's the best way to kind of start that process? Sure. I'm on all the uh, social media connections that you can think of, but my, my website is my name, Greg Martinelli.net, and you can, I can give you all the contact for, for posting it. But um, G R E G M A R T I N E L L I dot net. Um, they can email me, Greg at Greg Martinelli.net. Uh, my phone. Um, it's just me. I'm a, a my own a my own answering service. Six zero eight seven five one six nine seven one again. Six zero eight seven five one six nine seven one. And then I'm on LinkedIn. Um, I think that's just Greg Martinelli, but is the the sign on thing for LinkedIn. But uh, I'm out there. There's uh, free blog posts and podcasts. There's yep. about three hundred of them out there on the website. They can see whether they. They can listen to those and see whether they like the topics that I talk about and it would be a fit. And I tell you, uh, Jared, that I've worked with anywhere from companies with that numbered in the one to thousands. So if they're interested, it never hurts to talk. There's a there's a little button on there. They can schedule a, a half hour call to talk about what all is involved and what kind of costs are involved and things like that. But, uh, well, yeah, I was, I'm glad you mentioned that specifically and, the podcast. I was listening. I, I think I listened to three or four episodes, um, on my way home after, <laughs> after talking with you and, and really enjoyed that. I mean, intentionally, like again, yeah. maybe because it speaks my language and it's been a, it's sure. been something that we've been looking at trying to even sharpen, um, our business, uh, units on, um, sales. Right. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and, and we'll, we'll drop the, actually the link to your site in our episode Perfect. notes. So if you're listening to this right now, just drop down, you'll be able to go straight to Greg's website. You'll be able to link up to the podcast as well. Um, but Greg, Hey man, thank you so much, man. I'm glad you bumped into us. It, it seems yes. like too many times I do the opposite. I'm always running yeah. into people and I'm the one kind of, um, I'm, I'm the one forcing it or I guess proactive. Yeah. Um, I'm glad you did. It shows a lot of your character. Hey, thank you so much, man. I'm sure we're going to be in touch. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to you. And thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. It was a lot of fun. Tyler, I'm sure you could tell in the tone of my voice talking to Greg like this one. I was pretty excited and passionate yeah. about, I think just cause I, I mean, I'm a salesman myself. So yeah, I always wonder why I got so drawn into sales and like loving the aspect of it. And I didn't share this and talk with Greg, but when I was a kid, I don't even know what age my, my grandpa on my mom's side, um, he, uh, he was an old concrete guy, but he had a pool store. He'd sell pool supplies. And I don't know why I always remember this, but he always kind of, he always, and he would say this, he had a cigarette in one hand or in his mouth, but he always say, you know, Jared, I could sell a bag of dog bleep to anybody. And I'm like, well, and I was under, like, it always kind of stuck in my mind. What did he mean by that? But like, he was always, he's like, he was just always like, hey, yeah, he goes, man, Jared, I could sell a dog, you know, a bag of this. But I think he just thought like, he prided himself on being an excellent salesman. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong; I'm not going to sell anybody, <laughs> you know, a dog, you know, a, a dog of, you know, a load of crap. But I, get, I think that struck me, and maybe that was why I was always drawn to it. I don't know, but yeah, I thought I just I was when Greg was talking, I kept thinking about that skill set and why I've always gravitated and, and loved the sales part of business. Um, but man, he brought up some good points. I mean, just a couple other things, just, just talking about like, dude, you have to want, you know, if, if you hire him, um, you have to, you have to be invested, you know? Yep. And, um, I think he said, yeah, he's, he's had companies that they bring him in. Well, the sales team thinks they already know what they're doing or they don't need to learn anymore. Um, I thought that was good. Um, but I think the best of all, he did really talked about like, especially in the grain and feed industry. And I think this is, this can go for trucking too. Cause you, you know, don't get me wrong. You're moving goes from point A to point B and there's a lot to that, but it is very commodity driven. You can't change the, you know, how you're going to yeah. deliver that to any, anybody else. The difference is you, the difference people notice it's you. It's not, 
you know, I mean, there's all these ancillary ones, you know, the nice equipment and all that, but like people remember how, you know, the, how they dealt with you in that experience, whether you're hauling for somebody, whether you're selling or buying grain from yep. somebody booking a load. I mean, that's, that's the key driver. And sometimes we forget about that, you know, yep. and how do you make sure, even if you're on the side of the, of the buyer or the seller or whatever that might be, like you have to, you have to be selling and understanding that, Hey, this isn't just about me. Yeah. It's very cutthroat industry. And, uh, it's just about, I mean, there's hundreds of thousands of people who are doing, you know, the same thing. So it's just how, how can you set yourself apart yeah. and, you know, sell yourself better than the next guy. I remember it, back in my days of, you know, when I was scheduling trucks, like there were some guys I would call and man, they were just angry. And I, I know a lot of good ones, but like, I was wondering like, why be angry about this? Like, I know that they were upset about something, but like, man, that just gave me a bad vibe. And like, I didn't want to do business with them. Yeah, I didn't that wanna, wasn't your first contact. It wasn't my first contact. And I just like, I had that pre-notion, you know, that out there, you know, some people are going to call, but like, like you have to be a salesman depending and no, it doesn't matter where you are in the supply chain. You have right. to be a good salesperson. And that, and that doesn't mean being salesy. It's just being able to make sure and sell the service that you're offering. Yep. Yep. So right. cool. Um, well, man, just a few things again, it's Christmas week. We want to wish you and your family a very Merry Christmas. We know a lot of guys will be out on the road, but man, we hope that you schedule yourself back in to spend quality time with your family. Um, I, I, sometimes I love it. A lot of guys, like when they're home, they spend a lot of times on our forum, which is kind of cool. It's always cool to see what yep. people are commenting on there. I think people, again, they get, uh, they get on our apps and, um, and play more around maybe than when they're on the road, <laughs> yep. uh, which is really cool. But man, we just want to thank you for an awesome year. Um, again, wishing you all Merry Christmas. A um, couple of few things just about our services, man. We always want to mention, you know, bulk insurance group, and we are offering full trucking commercial insurance. Larry and his team over there, man, continue to rock it out. You know, I want to mention something too, you know, it is a pain in the butt to switch insurance companies. Yep. Like I'm actually in the process of looking and doing it right now because my premiums went up and it really upset me. But then again, I don't, I get angered about like, or I, I get anxiety about having to get all this switch. Yeah. There's a lot to it. And yeah. you know, you've been with the guy for so long. Been with the guy so long, man, he's treated me right, but man, it's gone up. But man, I don't want to have to send all these reports, get all this switched over, new process, new paperwork, documentation, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Here's what I'm going to tell you, and don't do this for my sake, dude. These guys, Larry and his team have made this so simple to switch over. Yep. And they've realized that there's a lot of things that they can get that you don't have to provide. Um, and I, I, I think we talk about all the time, like I tell them, don't make this a hard process. And they keep streamlining the process. So again, if you're out there and again, maybe, you know, you know, your premiums keep going up or know that there's better options like we can provide, dude, give us a call. We will make it as painless as possible. I will promise you that. If not, come find me and I will make yep. sure if there's anything I need to personally do. Um, but yeah, uh, reach out to Bulk Insurance Group. Man, I know that they can help you out. I know they can service you better than any other company out there. I am confident and stand behind that. Yeah. Even if you've been with your agent for 15, 20 years, I mean, just just give us a chance. Let us quote you and let let us uh, try to work with you yeah. and, and you won't be disappointed. The stories I've been hearing from these guys at Switch yep. is just, it's um, humbling and it's, I just can't believe it, you know, that, uh, that you know, a lot of people are just like, hey, these people actually care about me. They're not just you're worried about, you know, their commissions, yep. um, which is so cool. Um, last two on note, man. Hey, interest rates continue to go up. I don't have to tell you all that as listeners out there. Um, man, it's, if interest rates are, are affecting you all, cash flow is tight. Talk to us at Smart Freight Funding. We have not increased our rates um, on funding, we can still do next day pay at a very low rate, probably cheaper than your bank can offer that. Give us a call, talk to our team there. Um, Tyler will put the, the phone number in there. You can, there, there's information on our website for smart freight funding. We want to make that note. Cause again, we don't know what 2023 is going to be. Some are predicting, are predicting it's going to be pretty rocky. We want you to be protected and be confident in, in um, getting paid out there. So contact our team at Smart Freight Funding. We definitely want to help you out. There. Yeah. The best thing about it is there's no contract. So, you know, in the middle of the year, if you decide that you don't want to use it anymore, then, you know, you're free to walk away and to yep. stop using Smart Freight. However, we do find that anyone yep. who uses Smart Freight, they stick with it. Because they don't have to mess with paperwork. No, that we've I mean, had we've had companies leave and they yeah. come back. 
Yeah, all the it, time. Yeah, it's like yeah. having a an, a personal accountant we, for your business. We were just up there last week, and then I, I always ask Rachel, like, "Hey, how many? You know, have we, who who who's left, or who have you know who's come in to buy out a contract?" She's like, "Jared, it's the opposite. We are buying out contracts and having guys come yep. back to us." Um, because of the service. So again, I'm not patting ourselves on the back. We just want you to be treated better out there um, than you're being treated right now. And we're confident in that. So um, cool. Well, last thing too, we want to make mention, we are hosting our first ever bulk freight conference coming up in February 8th and 9th. Tyler has been hard at work getting that organized. It's going to be a fun event. If you would like to attend, you can go to bulkfreightconference.com and register or reach out to us. Man, we would love to have you there. Um, it's going to be action-packed um, with guest speakers. We're going to have a panel of discussions talking yep. about anything from technology to rates, regulations. I mean, all the things that are affecting your business are going to be sprinkled with some entertainment. It's going to be held at the conference center at the Bass, at the Mothership Bass Pro yep. um, with tickets to the Wonders of Wildlife. So we want to see you there. Um, we want to put a face with a name. So if you can make it, man, please do so. I know it's uh, it's busy out there and it's going to take time from your schedule, but I promise you it will be worth it. Yep. So awesome. Well, thank you very much for listening to the Bulk Loads uh, podcast. Uh, Merry Christmas and God bless.